Good morning. This is St Paul's Barton Live. It's Sunday the 10th of May 2020. I'm Andrew, one of the church wardens. Welcome church family this morning to our service of word and worship. And if you're new to us this morning, you're really welcome to be with us wherever you're listening from, whether on the Isle of Wight, in the parish or for wherever you are in the world today, you're really welcome to be part of the St Paul's family today. We are family together, whatever at this time. This morning, we are going to be welcoming our guest speaker, uh, the Reverend Mike Fox. Mike is an honorary assistant clergy person at St. Mary's in Rygate. And this morning's order of service you will have find on our website, which is www.stpaulsbarton.co.uk, where you can download the order of service. But also the words will also come on the screen today for you as well. If you want to send any text repetitions, uh, requests in. We can still receive text requests this morning or prayer requests this morning. If you can send them to 07947 153 344, we'll be spending a time in prayer a little bit later this morning. So, uh, live from <coughs> Rygate today. Uh, good morning, Mike. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Great, great. It's good to see you this morning. Um, before we, I lead, before we start with our collects and opening prayers, can I pray for you before we start? Thank you. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that at this time we can use technology like this to, to worship you and to draw near to you. We thank you, Lord, that we can create live links like this. And Father, we thank you that we can come together to worship you as family together across this island, across the world, as family together, as the Christian community together. And Father, this morning, I just pray for Mike. I pray, Lord, as Mike uh, brings your word to us today. We pray, Lord, it will be a word in season. And Lord, I pray that it will be a challenge for this time, Lord, and a time and also a comfort for at this time as well. Father, we just pray for him this morning. We pray, Lord, for a fresh infilling of your Holy Spirit upon him as he brings your word to us today. And Father, we just pray that all the technology works today. And we just pray for your blessing upon him in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <coughs> OK, so we're going to just start this morning with the collect and the collect for today is risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve to the glory of God, the Father. Amen. And on your service sheets, you'll find today. Um, we're going to do our opening opening prayer this morning so we say together we have come together in the name of Christ to offer praise and thanksgiving to hear and receive God's holy word to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins that by the power of your Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God so we say together our confession this morning. Lord God, we have sinned against you and we have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy upon us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sins. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm just going to read a passage from Romans 8 verses 1 to 2. Therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. So we're going to start this morning uh, with worship. We're going to sing Blessed Assurance. So let's worship together. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. 
Good morning. Mike Fox here from Reigate in Surrey. I'm going to read to you from Romans chapter 3, beginning at verse 21. And this is from the NIV. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood, to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished, and he did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time, so as to be just, and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Amen. Well, you may remember that I was with you last year, about this time last year. Um, you may not recognize me because I suspect my hair may have been a little shorter then than it is now. And um, I preached in the church on the parable of the Good Samaritan. And we talked about love. Today I want to talk about grace in a time of trouble. I became a Christian when I was 19 and away at college. And um, immediately I had put my faith in Jesus for the first time, I was introduced to the Bible and to key verses in the Bible. You know, the well-known ones like John 3.16, for God so loved the world, and Romans 3.23 which we've just read, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It was a good introduction to the Bible. You start small with single verses like that, which you can memorize, and you gradually build up your knowledge of scripture. The danger with taking verses like Romans 3.23 out of context and away from the surrounding verses is that uh, you can miss things. For example, we never really got beyond verse 23 into verse 24, which is hard because at verse 24, Paul says, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. And it's not easy to understand exactly what he means there. So let's take a closer look at the two verses together, verse 23 and verse 24 of Romans chapter 3. We'll start off with, all have sinned. Do you agree? Well, not everyone does. I was involved in leading an alpha group uh, last year, and one of the members of the group said that he had never committed any sin. He'd only made mistakes. Well, Fair enough. But um, I think if you take an honest look at yourself, you'll probably uh, see, agree that you have not been perfect. Have you been perfect? Well, the way to find out is to ask your husband or your wife and see whether or not they think you've been perfect or any close friend or family member for that matter. So I think we can probably go on and say, yes, we have all sinned. We have all done things of which we are now thoroughly ashamed or said things which we wish we'd not said or even thought things which we, risked, which we wish we'd not thought. So then Paul goes on to say, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, what does he mean by that? There's a rather good version of the Bible called The Message, which you may have come across. And this is how the message puts that verse 23. We've compiled this long and sorry record as sinners 
and proved that we are utterly incapable of living the glorious lives God wills for us. That's a rather interesting way of putting it. I'm not sure about incapable, maybe we're incompetent. We can't because we're not competent enough to live the glorious life that God wills for us. In other words, we fail to reach our full potential. In the days when I was a teacher, I used to have to write school reports and you always had to be positive and to say praise things about the child. So you might say something like this, he or she has potential, but, which is praise because they've got potential, but there's a bit of a challenge there. They're not fulfilling their potential. And that, I think, is what Paul is saying here. We have potential. We have potential to live the kind of life that God wants us to live, which reflects his glory because we are made in the image of God. But somehow we don't reach up to our potential. We don't achieve it. So all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We could put it another way. We've not found our true identity. In other words, we're not what we should be and could be. We're not living up to our true potential as God's children. And that's true of all of us because he says all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. Now he goes on at verse 24 to say, all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. There are one or two hard words there, and we'll start with the hardest, which is that word justified. It's not a word we use very often, justified. What does it mean here? Well, I think it's probably a technical term that Paul is using. And the best way of understanding it is to see that to be justified is the opposite of what is said in verse 23. In other words, all have sinned and fall short of, God, of the glory of God, and now the opposite has happened. All are justified. In other words, sin has been forgiven, and we've been restored to our true identity, which means that we are living up to God's image by reflecting God's glory. So that's a rather special way of thinking of it, isn't it? All are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Let's look at three little words that Paul has stuck in to this verse. We'll start with the word all. It means, of course, all who believe, because he will say that it is by faith that we are justified and welcomed into the community of Jesus' disciples. So it's all who believe uh, who form this community and reflect God's glory. Not very well in my case, but in some cases remarkably well. Now the next word is freely. This transformation that Paul is talking about is a free gift. One of the verses that I was uh, told or recommended to learn when I became a Christian was later in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, which you're probably familiar with. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Free gift of God. God takes the initiative and gives us his grace. So let's go to that last expression, his grace, by his grace. Let's go back to the verse, all are justified freely by his grace. His grace is his undeserved love and mercy. We don't deserve it. We haven't done anything to deserve it. We can't earn it. We have to receive it as a gift. No wonder that John Newton could sing Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. It is a sweet sound to know that you have been justified through God's grace. So our identity is established through this verse. Now, I don't know about you, but I find that our present crisis, the plague, if you like, coronavirus, has brought all sorts of problems. 
For some people, it's brought financial problems. For others, big relationship problems. People long to be hugged, for example. And in church, we've got problems too. We're not meeting together in one another's presence. A virtual service seems in many ways to be second best. But another thing about the present crisis is that it's caused people to ask a good many questions. Questions, for example, to do with identity. Who am I? And purpose. What am I meant to be doing? I'm not doing what I used to do. What am I meant to be doing now? Well, they're good questions, of course. Who am I and what am I meant to be doing? It's always good to ask us questions, ask ourselves questions like that. But I think they're the wrong questions for Christians. The question should be, who are we, God's people? And what are we meant to be doing? And the answer, of course, is we are God's family. Still, ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. We have eternal life. We are gifted with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells within us as though in a temple. And we're beginning to reflect God's glory together as we should. We don't do it very well, as I've already said, but we're all being transformed into God's image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. I didn't make that up. That comes from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. And it's all through grace that he is transforming us so that we do reflect his glory and live up to his image. You see, God wants us as his children, as his family, to be shining lights in a dark world. And especially in this time of plague, when so many people are anxious and worried and fearful. How can we be shining lights when we're not able to meet together as we used to? Well, I'm going to say this. The way to be a shining light for the Lord Jesus Christ is to be yourself. Where you are and who you are. Just shine. If you light a candle, it doesn't make any effort to shine. It just shines. And that's what the Lord looks for in us to shine, to reflect his glory and his love and his mercy and his kindness. Graham Kendrick wrote a song that you'll be familiar with, Shine, Jesus, Shine. I am going to take the liberty of changing the words slightly to this. Shine, Christians, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Or putting it another way, Shine, Christians, shine. Fill this island with the Father's glory. That's what we're here for. Let's go and shine today for Jesus' sake. Amen. Thank you, Mike. We're going to respond this morning in worship. We're going to sing four songs together. Now, glorious, your grace is enough. Jesus, God's righteousness revealed, and we bow down. So let's worship together. The words will come up on your screen. Uh, so let's worship and draw near to the Lord this morning.
those who've sent some prayer requests in today. Um, we're going to pray together. So let's turn to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father God, we just lift up to you those people who we know are unwell at this time. Father, I just want to lift up a few names to you now, Lord, that you will just be with them, that you will comfort them. We pray especially for Caroline and for Colleen. Father, we do lift up to you Nikki. Father, we pray that you will give her relief from the migraines that she's having. We pray for Debbie, that you will comfort her and relieve her from her anxiety and worries. Father, we lift these people to you now. We also lift up to you Karen and Alex, Sam and Hannah. We pray for continued healing for them and especially for Hannah as she continues with her exams. Father, we pray also for our NHS staff, for our chaplains here on the island, for Stuart and for Janet. We pray for all the doctors and nurses. We pray, Lord, that they will keep well and fearless at this time. Lord Jesus, we just lift up to you our hospital for all the staff at our hospital at this time. We pray for protection around them, Lord Jesus. Father, we pray for Israel. We pray for the Jewish people. We pray for protection around them at this time, Lord. As your scripture commands, we just pray for them. And Father, we pray for those of us who've got children who are sponsored through compassion. Now, many of us have got children sponsored through compassion. And Father, we just pray for those children and for their families and the countries that they live in, that they will be protected. Father, we pray for our church too. We pray for the Church of England, for all the, all the churches representing this country, all the church denominations in this country. And a prayer for today from uh, the ACNA Book of Common Prayer, which is a really good collect for today. It's called a collect for neighbourliness. And it says, increase, O God, the spirit of neighbourliness amongst us, that in peril we may uphold one another, in suffering tend to one another, and in homelessness, loneliness, or exile befriend one another. Grant us brave and enduring hearts that we may strengthen one another until the disciplines and testings of these days are ended and you again give peace in our time. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Father, Lord, we just pray for, I continue to pray for our church. We pray that there will be a sense of repentance in our church at this time that there will be a turning back to your laws and statutes. May we turn the other way, Lord, turn back to you, to your grace and your mercy. May we turn back to you, Lord, as a country. May we turn back to you as a church. Father, we just pray, Lord, that you will bring the tears of repentance upon uh, our churches and upon our nations and upon this nation, Lord. Lord, have mercy upon us at this time. Have mercy upon us. Father, we pray for our government. We pray for Boris Johnson and his cabinet and all those uh, in Parliament. Father God, we pray, Lord, that you'll give them wisdom. But Father, we also pray that you'll give them revelation at this time, Lord. Revelation, Lord, to hear from you and to respond to your, your call, Lord. Father God, we just lift up to you our government. And Father, may we use this time for your glory. May we use this time to proclaim the gospel. May we just use this for you this time for your glory, your Lord, this opportunity to preach the gospel, Lord. May we preach Jesus. May we preach hope in Jesus for all who turn to you Lord Jesus you are the hope of the nations Lord Jesus may we turn to you and as we close this prayer time we're just going to say the the Lord's Prayer together which is on your uh, sheets but also will come up on screen as well 
So we close our prayer time with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hello, Mike. I hope you're still there, live from Crawley. You just yeah. thank you. Well, I said Crawley. I mean Rygate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting different parts of Surrey and Sussex muddled up here. Um, Father, we, uh, Father, I'm, I'm praying as well now. Uh, Mike, would you like to just close us with a blessing? Yes, sure. So, to God's gracious mercy and protection, we commit one another. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace both now and evermore, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and rest upon you and upon those you love and care for, now and always. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mike. It's been a great pleasure to have you with us today. Uh, thank you so much for bringing God's word to us. It's been really great uh, and, and all the technology worked all the way to Rygate without any problems at all this morning after our concerns <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much and we look forward to welcoming you again uh, to speak again at St Paul's at some point in the future well that will be lovely thank you very much indeed thank you so much for being with us this morning okay. and thank you also for Tristan who's done all the technical this morning for us uh, thank you Tristan you've done a fantastic job today so we're just going to close us this morning with our notices uh, for today. Um, as I mentioned last week, uh, the PCC has some exciting news to share in that we've decided to move forward with the possibility of having a student work, youth worker on placement with us here at St Paul's from September, working in partnership with Youth for Christ and Moorlands College. So please continue to pray that this process moves forward during this coming week. Uh, but as part of this, we will be needing to find a host family to accommodate the student uh, to enable this to happen. So please continue to pray and seek the Lord. And if you feel you might, the Lord might be prompting you on this, please contact me or a member of the PCC uh, just to show that, that, that you may well be feeling the Lord is asking you to help out with the accommodation, which would be great. So please continue to pray. It's a fantastic opportunity for our church family and for our young people uh, to have a youth and families worker for us for from September onwards. Um, other things just to bring to your attention uh, next Saturday night there will be a Zoom quiz that'll be at 7 p.m. Uh, Paul and Michelle will be uh, running the quiz on Zoom. Uh, you will need to have five questions of your own uh, ready to be part of the quiz as well so to be ready for that. Uh, there will be a password and uh, a meeting number that will be available midweek if you want to be part of that quiz on Saturday night at seven o'clock. More information is going to be on the newsletter this week. Kevin is doing a fantastic job in sending uh, our email electronic newsletters out with all the information you need, prayer requests and everything. And, and he's doing a fantastic, him and Penny doing a fantastic job sending those out by post as well. I know that many people who aren't able to see this are really appreciative um, of that. So thank you, Kevin and Penny, for that. Please be keeping contact during the week, uh, supporting each other by telephone, uh, whether it's on the WhatsApp group, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, just search for St Paul's Barton. And as I mentioned last week, we now have a YouTube channel, so you can watch our service again if you want to, or if, you mi or if some people missed it, they can re-watch it either on Facebook or they can watch it again on YouTube. You just go to YouTube and you subscribe by clicking on the bell and then you'll get a notification when something is uploaded. So please this morning share the service on Facebook 
Uh, if you're able to and you, and you would like to, that would be great. And But do join us for coffee after this service, coffee on Zoom this morning. Uh, and if you're new to us today and you're with us for the first time and you would like to join us for coffee, you would be really welcome. Uh, coffee on Zoom, just get your coffee and biscuits ready uh, and we'll meet together probably in around about five past 11, uh, the meeting will open on Zoom. You will need an ID, a meeting ID and a password. Uh, but if you'd like to be part of that Zoom meeting, if you're new to us today, you're very welcome. Uh, just please text uh, uh, your, your, your name to 07947 153 344. That's 07947 153 344. And I will send you the, uh, the Zoom meeting number and the password back. So have a great week. Uh, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Take care. Blessings.